In this lesson, we're going to extend the idea of continuity from a single point to an interval. All right, so it may seem obvious, but a function is continuous over an interval. All right, let's just come to some like A to B uh, region of the number line. All right, if it's continuous for each value in that interval. So it makes sense. All right, the continuous definition fits for every single value. It's true for that interval. Uh, but we do need to be a bit careful with the endpoints, right, because limits tend not to exist on endpoints because there's only one side of the limit definition. You don't get both sides, so we should be a bit careful how we describe, uh, define continuity at the endpoints. All right, for an open interval, those are the easy ones. There's not really endpoints for an open interval because open intervals just get close, so this will look like something like this. Uh, you don't actually care about one and two. You'll care about like one point 1.01 and 1.001, 1 .001, but you don't actually care about 1 itself because of the parentheses. Right, so in an open interval, the endpoints aren't considered, so there's really nothing else we have to do. So as long as it's true for everything in between 1 and 2, then it's going to be continuous for the interval. Right, closed intervals, on the other hand, so this would look something like this. For those values, we actually do care about the endpoints. All right, so we'd have something like starts at 1, goes and goes to two, and it might work for everything between one and two, but the definition really doesn't make sense exactly at one because there's this kind of cutoff. All right, so what do we do? We just say that it has to be one-sided continuous at those endpoints. So on the left endpoint, which for our example is one, so one's here. All right, so on our left endpoint, if we just look at the right-hand side of that, that has to be equal to the function value. So at the endpoints, we only consider one side and just from the right. And on the right-hand side, we do the same thing. We would just consider just to the left of that value and make sure that it actually fits the continuity definition. All right, so for, you'll get a lot of examples like this. I right, determine all the intervals where something is continuous. So again, you're thinking about the bad places, where are the bad things that happen. So for rationals, what we always want to do is kind of factor it. Here I can factor out an x in the bottom. And that's going to help me, help me figure out the bad values. The bad values are what would cause me to divide by 0. So if I take the bottom of my fraction now, I'm going to get 0 and negative 2. All right, so those are the bad values. My function is not going to be continuous. They're both asymptotes. But everywhere else, it's going to be fine. So the intervals where this is continuous, I can go all the way from negative infinity up into that first asymptote at negative 2. Then just after negative 2 and that asymptote happens, I go from there to 0. And then after 0, I can go forever after that. And again, you can put these little union symbols to make it one big interval. But those are kind of the three distinct places. If you were to graph this, it looks something like that or something similar. All right, so you kind of have these two asymptotes. But everything else works outside of that. So you just kind of take those two asymptotes out of your interval, and you get all the intervals where this function is continuous. And notice we don't have any of the square brackets all right, for a closed interval, right, because these endpoints don't actually work. Right? There's no function value at negative 2 and no function value at 0, so they can't be continuous at those endpoints. All right, so we just have to use these closed, or sorry, open intervals with the parentheses. All right, what relationship should there be with polynomials and continuity? So now might be a good time to kind of pause the video, think about this. All right, what relationship is there with polynomials and continuity? And the answer is polynomials are always continuous. So if you remember back when we were doing limits, if we had a polynomial, polynomials are really nice to always find the limit of a polynomial. You just plugged in the number. All right, so pretty much by saying that, we're saying that the limit exists and it's equal to, and I just plug in the number, which is the exact definition of continuity, right? Those two things exist and they're equal to each other. So just polynomials always work and are nice. All right, we're going to get that they're always continuous. And just a couple other functions, rational functions and trig functions will also always be continuous for their entire domain. So for that example we did with the rational, we just kind of figure out the bad values. There's places where we divide by zero and everything else is good, everything else is continuous. For our trig functions, sine and cosine, they're continuous everywhere. 
all the other trig functions have these asymptotes. So they're not continuous at the asymptotes, but they're continuous everywhere else. So pretty much for our functions that we have right now that we're kind of considering right now, everywhere that's not bad is good. All right, so they're continuous, except for at those weird places where we're gonna get asymptotes and things.